What is up YouTube people? Kuda Mola here coming at you with another exciting video and continuing with my Best Bang for the Buck series, I am going to be talking about and reviewing the Saber Pepper Gel Home Defense Kit uh, and comparing it to a product that I had already purchased earlier, which was the pepper spray, the Saber Pepper Spray. So before we start this video, I have to tell you that I live in the state of California and according to California Penal Code, 22810, a person is allowed to carry up to 2.5 ounces or 70.87 grams of pepper spray, pepper gel, uh, things of that like. I'm also going to give you a warning and a preface to this whole video by saying that this video is intended for entertainment purposes only. I'm merely giving you an opinion of mine. I'm not advising you or directing you in any way, shape, or form, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's get into it. So I purchased the Sabre Pepper Gel Home Defense. Uh, this is what the package looks like when you get it in the mail. Uh, basically, uh, it comes in a package like this, and basically it's the pepper gel itself and a bracket that you can attach to a uh, place next to your bed or next to an entryway in your house or whatever. Uh, that's what comes in the packages, just one canister in this. Uh, let me put this aside for a second. So what's kind of cool is the packaging itself, when you do open it up, there's just two little pull tabs. So those those snap together, and then basically you just unsnap them. You know, trying to do this with one hand isn't easy, but you can see how easy it is to open. So there's no, you don't have to cut it, you don't have to use a knife or scissors or anything, so that's kind of nice. And then uh, once you do get it open, it comes with this, I guess you I guess you could call this like an instruction manual or like an owner's manual. Uh, but basically this is what the front looks like. This is what the back looks like. So let's let's hold these for a sec just so you can see what everything is. Uh, this is basically saying that to operate it, you would basically turn it counterclockwise and then press down. That's what gets the spray to work. And then uh, they are telling you, Sabre is telling you to spray from ear to ear across the eyes. Uh, and then it's showing you that the bracket, uh, this is made out of plastic. It's, it's a good quality plastic. Uh, this Sabre is actually made in the United States, which is kind of nice, the Sabre brand, uh, which is kind of cool it's made in the USA. Uh, but the brackets, the plastic's pretty cool, uh, and they're telling you to attach it somewhere next to your bed or, you know, in an entryway, etc. And then it's going to tell you uh, that the active ingredient is, uh, what is that, oleoresin, oleoresin capsicum, I guess? It's basically like a type of red pepper. Uh, and then it's got a limited warranty, caution, warning, uh, limitations of liability, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then it's got their website down below. So you get the idea of what's on here. Okay, so let's get into it. So first impression right off the bat is this is a bigger canister than the compact version, which most people carry. But like I said, according to California Penal Code 22810, you are allowed to carry up to 2.5 ounces or 70.87 grams. So in terms of size, this is 61.5 grams. Uh, let's see if I can grab focus for you right there. So this is uh, 61.5 grams. And as you can see, the expiration is usually about four years from the date of manufacture, which is kind of nice. So being that we're in 2020 now, this expires 2024. So that gives me four years to, to actively you know, use the product. Uh, 61.5 grams is within the legal limit, at least in California, you know, and, um, another thing I'm going to tell you is please check with your local authorities about what is legal in your state, in your county, in your city, you know, et cetera. Uh, make sure you find out what your local laws are, how to legally use this. If you are even allowed to legally use this, uh, but go ahead and check where your local laws are. All right. So, uh, in terms of capacity, capability, all that good stuff, uh, 61.5 grams translates into about 2.1 ounces. Uh, and you do get uh, a 17 foot range. So representing with a, with a nickel and a quarter, let's say this was 17 feet. So up to 17 feet. And then also you can use this uh, with 17 bursts. So 17, 17 separate bursts. So 17 feet, 17 bursts. So it's definitely creating some distance between you and whatever your offending opponent is, whether that's a rabid animal of some sort, an alien zombie apocalypse, you name it. All right, so for comparison purposes, uh, this was the pepper spray that I had purchased a while back. I believe it was last year. 
uh, more of a compact form factor if you see them side by side you can kind of tell that uh, you're getting three times the amount of in the home defense version than you are in the compact version uh, the compact version is 22 grams as you can see right there so if I can grab focus uh, trying to get focus there we go so 22 grams is what you get in the compact version same expiration it's about four years from the data manufacturer uh, I purchased this about a year ago I believe it expires in 2023 or so uh, it does come the compact version does come with a little clip so if you have a backpack of some for some form you can click clip this on to the you know, a, uh, like a strap or a side latch or whatever, or you could just stick it in like a compartment of your backpack. Uh, and there you go. And the same, uh, the same holds true with this in terms of like storing it. It does not come with a clip, but you can just easily throw it into a backpack. And you know, that's the size. Uh, in terms of uh, the size, speaking of size, so this is 22 grams, which translates into about 0 0.7, 0 0.7 ounces. So once again, 22 grams translates into about 0.7 ounces. The operational uh, use or how to deploy the, the pepper, whatever it is, uh, is basically the lock position is to the left. You would turn it counterclockwise and then press down, and that's what opens up uh, the applicator or whatever you want to call it. So basically, uh, there is a little like a tab there like a little bit of a dot, you can see that little bit of plastic where you would click it in. So at least it'll stay there. Uh, so you would counterclockwise and press down. And the home version is exactly the same type of system. There's a little tab, this goes counterclockwise and you press down, right? So counterclockwise and then press down. So you get that. So uh, the this was 17 feet and then 17 bursts. This is, 10 feet so it's a shorter distance so representing with the nickel and the quarter uh it's maybe a little greater than half right so you got 10 feet range on this one you got 17 feet range on this one this one gives you more bursts however so you get 35 bursts at a 10 foot range and this one is remember 17 bursts at 17 feet 17 bursts 17 feet 10 feet, 35 bursts. All right, so let's talk about the difference between a spray, like this is the compact spray, and this is the gel. So difference between the spray and the gel. So the spray is a more liquidy, uh, watery type uh, liquid, which means that as you spray it and as it goes through the air, uh, there may be more of a chance for it to, to disperse. Uh, and then if you're out in like on a hiking trail or you brought this with you camping or whatever, you know, any little kind of breeze or wind, because this is the spray and it's more of a watery type base type thing, uh, it may have a, more of a chance to disperse. And then if the wind picks up, it could blow right back at you. So keep that in mind. The gel on the other hand, because it is a gel, it's more, I don't know what the right term is, but basically it holds together in a tighter liquid meaning that as you spray it, it, it has more of a chance to stay on course to eventually, you know, hit your target. So keep that in mind. So if there's a wind or a breeze, it is, I, I would say, less likely, not impossible, but less likely to be dispersed and then blow back at you. Like I said, not impossible, but less likely. All right. So we talked about the distance. We talked about the burst. Now let's talk about the uses for this. So a lot of people are going outdoors, you're hiking, you're camping, uh, you're going to the dog park, right? And you just you just want to feel safe or protected, whatever. Keep in mind that if you are going to use this on a wild animal of some kind, a zombie, an alien, whatever it is, uh, you really want to wait for that animal to come within range before you start using it. Or if you feel like the animal is really being aggressive or approaching you or charging you or attacking you in any way, shape or form, you know, if you're if you're walking down the the bike trail, like the bike trail, 
Actually, let me take that back. If I was walking down a, a hiking trail or some kind of you know camping trail or whatever it was, and I was just walking down the trail and I saw like a loose dog off leash, I'm not going to go and spray the thing. Like that would just be that would be wrong. You know, I'm I want to know what's up. I want to know if that dog is friendly or foe or whatever. If the dog is holding its ground, or let's say it was a mountain lion. Let's say I was walking down a hiking trail to a mountain lion was holding its ground and just growling at me, the best thing you can do is turn around and just walk out, get out of the situation or face the animal and back down slowly and just keep, just get out of there is the safest thing that I could possibly recommend. You know, the more, the more you're in the same area as the offending animal, whether it be a mountain lion, a bear, a coyote, you know, whatever it is, I, I would face the animal and then slowly back down the trail and just that would end my, my day right there. But if the animal is going to charge after me, or if, let's say it's a coyote and it's going to try to attack me, then yeah, I'd be more likely to to use uh, one or the other. In my specific case or my specific situation, I'd honestly rather carry the pepper gel with me if it was outdoors, especially at like the dog park, hiking trail, you know, whatever it is, uh, because of the distance. It creates more of the distance. Uh, almost double what the compact version would do. So almost double the distance between me and the offending animal, alien, zombie, you name it. All right, so going into the legalities of using this on people, let's say let's say uh, I'm driving down the street, a car cuts me off and says, hey, you cut me off back there, and the person in the car is getting really offensive and they're getting huffy-puffy and whatever. This is where I want to open this video up to discussion. So down below, there's a subscribe button, which I'd appreciate if you hit. There's a like button, which I'd also appreciate if you hit. Uh, and then down below in the comments section, I'm opening this up for discussion. So have you had a similar situation where you were, let's say, taking public transportation, a, you know, somebody who wasn't or somebody who was maybe mentally unstable started approaching you or you felt like you're, you know, you're, you're. Uh, circle of protection was being, you know, intruded upon. Have you used this product? What did the local authorities do or say to you? You know, what were the legal ramifications of that? Did you have to go to jail? Did you go to court? I'm just curious to know. My personal uh, thoughts on this, like I said, this is just my opinion for entertainment purposes only. I have heard that a lot of the local authorities, like your local police, your state trooper, whatever, will will often advise or tell you that the only time that you can use pepper spray, pepper gel, etc., is if you, if this is you, if you feel that your life is in danger, that if someone or something, whether it's a person or an animal or whatever, is encroaching on you, and you have tried everything you could possibly do to stop the the person from threatening your life basically so you give a verbal warning hey stop don't come closer you you're telling them hey i feel like you're threatening me or i feel like my life's in danger and you've done everything you could possibly do to verbally warn them to stop them and they're still coming at you perhaps they're coming at you with some type of a weapon a tire iron a gun a knife brass knuckles whatever it is I have heard that the authorities will tell you that the only time you can use this is truly in a self-defense situation where you feel like your life is being threatened, that you are unable to stop the attack in any other way possible, that you've done everything you could possibly do to stop this person or this thing, zombie, alien, bear, mountain lion, coyote, whatever, uh, delun de delusional, deranged, mentally unstable person. Uh, from coming any closer and, and you really feel like they are going to inflict some kind of bodily harm. And you have to prove that legally. Remember, we are in an age of cell phones. Everything gets recorded. Everything ends up on tape somewhere. So if you can show or prove or, you know, definitely articulate to the local authorities, to the police, to the cops, to your state trooper, whatever, the California Highway Patrol, that you felt like your life was in danger, that this person was going to be a threat to you or cause you bodily harm in any way, shape or form, then it was okay to use the pepper spray. But like I said, in the comment section below, please comment. Tell me what's happened in your situation. Let me know what you've heard. I'm kind of curious to hear any comments and all that good stuff. I have included a link 
to the home defense uh, sized pepper gel. I've also included a link to the pepper spray down below in the uh, description. And remember that subscribe button is down there. That like button is down there. I really appreciate it if you hit both of those. I'm Cooter Malloy. Please stay tuned for more exciting content and more best bang for the buck product reviews. And I will catch you on the next one.